Uh, kind of a response video to this Neil deGrasse Tyson guy. Uh, somebody posted me the link and suggested I might watch this video of this interview of him. But anyway, it's an hour long. I'm in 10 minutes. Hasn't really said anything very interesting. Um, did bring up the word reductionism, which um, he sort of ran away from. You know, well, I wouldn't call it reductionism. I'd call it functionism. I mean, it's just, you know, why run away from it? Why not just simply state plainly um, that, yeah, you believe in cause and effect, and you believe the only way to understand cause and effect is to try to reduce things to their causes, um, to, to look for the causes. Uh, so anyway, that, so that was kind of lame. Um, and then kind of um, said something about, um, started getting on the subject of primitive culture in a way, um, just sort of a rag on the whole idea of, you know, the idea that people have kept, not even that they kept, that they had wrong conclusions, that science is kind of a new way of looking at the world, and I don't think that's really right. <clears throat> I mean, it was all science. It was just really bad science. And every everything that people learn, they get attached to. I mean, you know, you, you grow into the custom, so it becomes part of your social your society so if you believe in demons then yeah they, you have your rituals and your your whole way of life and if somebody comes along and says well I have a little bit of evidence that sort of indicates there are no demons yeah people are going to resist that um, especially in the past because all people had was a little bit of evidence um, so now we live in a completely different world where yeah, we have a ton of evidence and it's all ordered and it's in museums and it's in books and it's in all kinds of places and so people really just don't have the same excuse anymore so the only excuse they have is they just don't want to let go of um, more comfortable notions of reality and that's what you're really arguing against so I'd almost say that um, I've said it before um, <clears throat> the ignorance of the past sort of had an excuse to be an asshole um, the ignorance of the present has no excuse at all. People are just being assholes. They're just assholes. Um, and there, there's really no defense for believing in this, this fables and unicorns and all this other made-up crap. Um, they're, they're more guilty of um, a willful disregard for the truth than they were in the past. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, we'll process some more of this and see if it goes anywhere. A little dull so far. Alright, 17 minutes, 18, 19 minutes in. And yeah, kind of dull still. Um, Pluto and Mars. Um, yeah, so it's going to take a lot to get to Mars, blah, blah, blah. Eh, who cares? Um, Pluto. Really, who cares? Whether it's a planet or not a planet, whether, what, who cares? Really not interesting, in my opinion. Incredibly not interesting. So, yeah. yeah that's, yeah, nothing, nothing to report here. So, we'll keep hoping. They're going to get on quantum crap next. Yeah, that's not to be good. Alright, about 30 minutes into this thing now. Um, <clears throat> they got on the subject of, um, the universe and quantum a little and uh, God and the idea that there's a whole bunch that we don't know about the function of matter or the universe and he used the example of the dark energy and dark matter and you know that we only understand seen four percent of the universe and uh, you know that sort of sets you up for this argument that um, yeah there's all this mystery out there and I thought his response to it was kind of lame because he sort of conceded mystery and yet claimed that it would be stupid to imply something else to the causes it but he didn't really explain that very well I mean the point is is that we understand um, the functions you know of of the matter within these contained spaces what exactly caused the universe to expand and what exactly is controlling some of that expansion in terms of what exists between solar systems and other things yeah well there's still some open questions but we certainly understand this pocket of the universe we understand the neighborhood we understand the basic function 
So anyway, that sort of gets me to think about the sun. I was thinking about the sun. He didn't talk about the sun. But anyway, um, he did a little bit just in the sense that, you know, the sun converts, um, you know, lighter elements into heavier elements. And um, it's just the whole idea of the sun. I mean, we think of the sun, we think of this energy it produces. But that's probably just a side effect of what the sun is doing. I mean, the sun's caught up in a, in a pressure equation, you know, where there is this, this heavy gravity... Um, this compression of matter um, or energy and um, you know that it's doing its own thing and the fact that it's radiating light and heat might just be a side effect of its primary function which is this this dense gravity problem and the fact that you know maybe it's captured um, or capturing so much energy or mass because of, you know, some kind of dark energy or dark matter. Um, but whatever, it's just the idea that this, we think of suns as being primary things that produce energy, but that just might be a tiny side effecty thing, just might be just some stupid aberration that takes place because of what's really happening inside of a sun, which is gravity. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll move along. Alright, just kind of moseying along here. Alright, 40 minutes. Um, yes, yeah, so now they're on the subject of um, science and idealism. Kind of the question, but not really directly stated, of, you know, is, uh, uh, you know, should we waste money on science or should we waste money on social improvement? And the arguments are being made by Diet Tyson that, um, you know, it's um, science produces that end game anyway. I mean, the investigation has value just as an investigation, and but it has this side effect of creating the tools to do all this social repair. Um, but what wasn't talked about here is the fact that there's this huge liability to the science where, yeah, you can cut down all the trees and you can destroy the environment and you can make a nuclear bomb and you can make drone airplanes and you can fight horrible sadistic wars and you can do all kinds of crap with this technology that has nothing, it has no social benefit. It only has a social liability and perhaps a catastrophic social liability. And so they really didn't get on that subject. So, yeah, not much to say. I mean, it's the old argument. I mean, yes, yeah, science has value, but um, some science more than other sciences. So, I mean, that's sort of the equation here, too. I mean, what science, what research has the biggest payoff? Who knows? I haven't done this. I haven't, I haven't done the research. <laughs> anyway, let's we'll see what happens next. It's kind of boring so far, really. 40 minutes. Of not terribly interesting. Alright, running into the last 10 minutes. I guess I'm not going to get any uh, UFO conversation because I really wanted to nail him on his, yeah, there's life in the universe. We haven't seen it yet, but yeah, it's out there. Um, crap. Um, you know, human arrogance. Yeah, right. To think we're the only ones. Well, it's human arrogance to think you have any evidence <laughs> of it being more than once, since we only have evidence of once. Anyway, um, yeah, so the other thing is that we're talking about is the, um, <clears throat> you know, that we're almost done with the science thing, and he's, Tyson's, ar Tyson's arguing that, uh, you know, yeah, we're on this exponential curve, and we're learning all this stuff, and blah, 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 and science is just this brave new frontier, almost kind of talk, <clears throat> and he's sort of, it, glaringly, in my opinion, yeah, there's lots of stuff we can do with physics, and we can play around with it. But if you look at something like biology and chemistry, um, yeah, we know a hell of a lot, <laughs> especially the biology thing. Um, yeah, we haven't dissected the, you know, we, we, have, we haven't got the cell uh, broken down and we, we're doing the genome -y thing and all that kind of stuff. But even that, all the new information is will, will aid us in some sort of technical way. But in terms of understanding the context of our existence, that science is done. We're cooked as a psychology, as a as a little beastie roaming on our little earth, as the little parasites that we are, yeah, that science is cooked. All right, it's 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 well done. It's finished. Um, you know, we are um, we can we can understand what 
the game is that we've been, where we came from, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Um, all that's right there in front of us. It's right sitting right there in front of us. It's just sitting right there in front of us. We have all the answers we need um, to know what we're doing and whether there's any point in we doing it. And they run away from that question. That's no, There's no more exponential growth in that question of what a human being is. He's a little sensing, feeling thing. And he likes to feel good and he doesn't like to feel bad. And he'll use his technology to make himself feel good and he'll do it in ways that are just blatantly and profoundly stupid by like I'll blow up some other people and take their shit um, so whatever I mean like I said that game is over um, and that's the big game <laughs> the rest of this 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 mumbo jumbo about understanding every nuance and detail about every cause and effect is sort of pointless because the important causes and effects the ones that have created us and are controlling every bit of um, psychology that runs through your head uh, yeah that one we understand really well so that was sort of disappointing but whatever trite uh, science here um, so anyway yeah we'll do the last 10 minutes see how it goes ah yes it's over um, <laughs> yeah so the last 10 minutes was pretty boring too um, yeah, they didn't really get to anything. Just talked about uh, science, progressing, propaganda, how is it doing in the media. Um, and uh, the Tyson guy just did a lot of hoopla, like, oh yeah, it's doing so much better because there's all these different people talking science on TV shows and you can channel surf and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and a lot of it's just pseudoscience. A lot of it's really bad science. Um, we got NASA telling us there's microbes in meteors and then they... We got, uh, you know, or, uh, microbes living on a different DNA with arsenic in it. And it all turns out to be a big bunch of hype and hoopla. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of bad science out there. And uh, the guy even used an example. I mean, there was like uh, five or six people talking about morality at some symposium in Arizona. And they got 2,000 people showed up. And it's like, that's good. You know, if a baseball team got 2,000 people in the stands, they're, 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 that's a huge, terrible, awful, they're a failure, the team's got to be moved to a different city, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they play all, you know, every day in the summer. <laughs> so, you know, you have a one-time event with, uh, you know, five or six big-name scientists, and you're going to get 2,000 people to show up, that's called failure. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty dismal out there in reality and that's what you know so this was a little bit hypey you know like oh yeah everything's working out just fine people are getting smarter uh... no there's more truthers on planet earth than there ever were um... people are still jumping any kind of wacky conclusion they want um... yeah just you know it's all fail so anyways just a pretty dull interview but anyway might as well subscribe to this science foundation though so, I like that uh, Interviews are good. So, but yeah, that was suck. Let's see what their homepage looks like. <coughs> Excuse the hiccuping. Not much of a background image. Not very clever. Autoplay is kind of tacky. Yes, it is. Carl Sagan Cosmos. Look at that. Yay. Um, yeah, 30 year anniversary or something. Uh, Tyson, Tyson guy said that in the interview. It's 31 years, I think. I mean, 1980, it's 2011. Uh, but whatever. <clears throat> um, that's kind of a dumb icon to have, YouTube. I don't know. That's, you know, kind of stupid for a science foundation. So anyway, it's only got a, <laughs> a thousand eight hundred subscribers. Come on, people. Well, it does suck. Um, Paul's ego. There's Paul. Yay, Paul. Yay, Paul's ego. Um, they're subscribed to Paul's ego. They're not subscribed to me, I bet. The Friggers. Coughlin. Let's see who else is on here. The Amazing Atheist. Okay, this isn't the official. Look at that, Carl Sagan, though. Um, this must be an unofficial website. Alright. Yeah, no in Mendem, though. I got that stupid whatever that stupid whatever there too God, a lot of jerks anyway yeah, 
make it real. Uh, yeah, it must say on here we're not official, right? I'll marry player videos with two case count, delete suspension, do not want videos. Whatever that is. From the Science Foundation. I don't get it. I don't have to look into this one. This doesn't seem like the Science Foundation. Science Research Foundation. I don't know. So I think they're cheating here somehow. But whatever. I guess I'll have to go to sciencefoundation.org. Yeah. Or the sciencefoundation.org. Anyway, until next time. And such.